how many of you have heard about the United Nations Association? Of course you would have, yeah. And uh, do you know the difference between the United Nations Association and the UN? Is it clear? Is it confusing? Uh, should I explain? <laughs> it is a wonderful name in our name, that word UN. People really listen and they get excited, but it's also a curse because people think we have money and we are big. Well, we are not. Uh, while the UN was created in 1945 to be more uh, on government to government, like uh, more bilateral or going to more lateral, so that the ambassador from Canada or the ambassador from Uganda or the ambassador from India will go to the United Nations Assembly to represent that country. There was no uh, fillers for the people's voice in the UN. While the bureaucrats were talking to each other with the small people, we didn't have a, a platform. So simultaneously, when the UN was being created, there was a movement of the people. So it's the people's movement for the UN say, while you guys are talking to each other at the uh, multilateral and more of the bi bilateral level, who's going to be, how are you going to get the voice of the people you represent? So the United Nations Association was created under the umbrella of the World Federation of UNAs. Similar to the UN, there were 50 countries that started at the time in 1945. While the UN has grown to 193 member states, the UNAs were about 105 countries, and Canada being one of those. As a matter of fact, tomorrow we are celebrating our 65th anniversary. Most people at 65, they retire. For us, we are going strong, as this is being evidenced. So our, our mandate and our really mission is to educate Canadians and engage Canadians in the work of the United Nations and the global issues that affect us all as global citizens. So that when the UN talks about poverty, gender equality, education for all, uh, the environment issues, HIV and AIDS, uh, um, child mortality, maternal health, or partnership. What have I just named? You saw me listing off all these things. Does anyone, can you give me one framework where we fit all that from the UN perspective? Have you heard about the Millennium Development Goals? <laughs> yes. <laughs> So when the UN declares in those walls of New York uh, about a new initiative, each country, each UNA, depending how they represent their people, have to think of how to bring this to their citizens. At UNA Canada, we have three ways of doing this. A, we can work through our members, and we're 20,000 members big in numbers across the country, from coast to coast to coast. We have 20 regional branches uh, in BC alone, you have about six, and the biggest one being here in Vancouver. There is one in Victoria. There is a branch in Saint, in the Kootenai, in the Kootenai, and uh, George. There is something called George, Prince George. Prince George. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and Prince George. So you have four, not six. You have four of them here in uh, in uh, uh, British Columbia, and I really encourage you to become members of UNA. Uh, as a matter of fact, when I leave from here, I'm gonna go to the Vancouver AGM because they're having uh, the former Canadian ambassador to the UN, Paul Handback, is the keynote speaker, so uh, I encourage you. Uh, Percy George, the president, was supposed to be here, but again, being an NGO, she's organizing that AGM and she couldn't be here, but uh, I'm going to encourage her to uh, disseminate through Lara some of the materials so that she can disseminate it. Canada, UN Canada, like the country that we belong to, we are really uh, respected and looked upon um, among our peers. Um, uh, we are, our ED, our executive director, she's also the president of the XCOM for Wafuna for World Federation of UNAs. Our government does actually talk to you, to us when they are going, especially around September when the General Assembly is about to sit, so they come to us and say, uh, are there any issues coming from the citizen that we should highlight? Um, 
they don't come back and report to us once that is done, but that's okay. We are a trusted partner of information when they need us, and I think that is very good. So, for example, if they come and say, look, our Scandinavian friends would like to know what we Canadians, how do we engage Canadians in the work of the UN and multiculturalism, trust me, we're going to be highlighting M&M, &M, you know, because we have something based on what we hear from you as our uh, partners, that really this is a tested, tried, and proven that this is the voice of the Canadians. So anti-racism education at UNA Canada was there when I joined 10 years ago. And I found that, that uh, in 1980, no, 2000, uh, I think it was 2000, when Durban, South Africa, was hosting the anti-racism uh, conference. Some of you must have heard about it. We had a group of young people who have gone to do anti-racism education, youth to youth against uh, anti-racism. And on the shoulders of that program, started by youth at UNA Canada, M&M uh, &M has evolved. Because after that, then we had integration and belonging. Then we had a, a sense of belonging, which really we had a lot of uh, ethnic intercultural communities saying the media misrepresents us or the media does not bring our own voice. There, there, there was a feeling among ethnocultural visible minorities that when our issues are portrayed out there, it is anybody but us who talk about them. So this, in a way, emerged as a project that was challenging the ethnocultural community. said, well, maybe you need to learn more how the media functions. Uh, and we, in our uh, capacity to convene and to bring others to a round table, we thought that we could uh, be reaching out to the communities and uh, bring the issues of uh, what we we'll call in journalism or in your uh, investigative journalism, the W5, or what is multimedia, uh, who is responsible for it, and uh, if it's multimedia, uh, how you know do we plug in and where do we want to take it. So. We thought that we need to cultivate a generation of young people, really a, a continuum, so that there will be awareness raising, then there will be uh, an in-depth understanding of what multimedia and multiculturalism is all about, and then an action that should be taken. And I think the young people should be the one driving this agenda. But then again, the young people that do not exist in a vacuum, so we thought, that if we, we connected them to the communities, to the media, and to the institutions that tend to train uh, journalists and uh, media people, then there will be an in-depth understanding of what it takes to be in front of a camera, to know how to focus on uh, people when they speak, so that to bring your voice in a, a, a media uh, lens and to create that social cohesion in our Canadian context it is really uh, a career. It's a professional undertaking that could be an option for the uh, uh, communities that are underrepresented and uh, underserviced by the media. So we are really looking forward so much to learn from you. Uh, maybe at the end of the day we'll find that uh, we won't learn much from you, but I doubt very much from, because previous work has told us if you open your ears and listen to the people, people, when you create a safe space for learning, they tell you what deeply they feel, and that is so useful. Then uh, we can really move forward and create the social cohesion that we all struggle and to maybe redefine what multiculture is all about. Now, the Scandinavians are coming and looking at Canada. Germany is having issues with their multiculturalism or with the issues of immigration. Norway, Sweden, and all these countries, they all look to Canada to see what is it that they can learn. And I think I'll be lying to say that we're going to go there and say, we are the people with the best practices. I don't think we are, but I think we have something to share. Uh, and I think that is, it's never easy, but you have to start from somewhere. Uh, Simi will be going in depth more on uh, what the program is and how you can get involved. But uh, beyond multiculturalism, we have uh, a number of programs that are just as exciting. Um, a few of them I have direct handing in them. I don't know if Simi gave you a one page, uh, um, a thumbnail sketch. Those pamphlets. Pamphlets, yeah. But really, we do very good work. And actually, I'd like you to get involved in much of the work we do. Uh, have you 
ever taken model United Nations, model UN, any of you? Ooh, Ooh. that would be an exciting, as a matter of fact, uh, depending on how we go, I like to do a, a model United Nations uh, or a simulation of the multimedia, multiculturalism one day to get the kids to debate the issues and uh, negotiate and create resolutions. I think that would be fabulous. Then we do have, of course, beyond this, uh, prestigious internship, like my boss was say, very prestigious, and we, we send young Canadian graduates of universities to different uh, UN agencies around the world. And I have to brag and say, uh, our research has shown that 90% of those who take our internship, they either end up being employed by the UN agencies or by our government. And so we have had a high rate of success. So spread the word. And, uh, and we do other things. And next month, you know, in May, we'll be having a, a, a fundraising gala here. Uh, because this year, ladies and gentlemen, is the international year or the UN year for forestry. And uh, the Canadian we are going to be honoring, he has done so much on uh, preservation of forestry and creating so many things I don't even know. Um, next year, I think it's the international year of chemistry. So we are looking to be honoring someone who maybe a pharmaceutical company, you know. We can accept some nominations, yeah. So in a nutshell, that is who we are, the People's Movement for the UN. Our national office, our professional staff is in Aroa, where Simi and I uh, work from. We also have a small limited office in Toronto and in Calgary. Uh, we used to have one here in, uh, in Vancouver when we were uh, preparing towards the uh, Olympics and the UN declared 2005 the International Year of Sport and Physical Education. So we are funded huge here in BC by uh, uh, 2010 Legacies now. So we had an office in their office. Uh, but uh, since we tend to be on project by project funding, uh, that did not continue. But uh, any other questions about uh, the differences between the UN and ourselves? I'm here for evening, and uh, thank you so much. <laughs>